I'm going to be going through the adjustment, the uh, not the assembly, but just the adjustment of this clock, uh, this cuckoo clock movement. And the first thing I want to show you is, the first thing we want to do is get the order and the timing of the the gong, this thing, the first coup part of the uh, cuckoo, and the second coup part of the cuckoo. And you might have noticed already that just for illustration I put these two bellows bars in in the wrong order. This longer one should be on the bottom on this clock. But I'm doing that just to show you what happens. So first of all, let's take a look at the whistles um, right here. So the whistles point to the outside and uh, the uh, paper goes to the front and here's, here's what they sound like. So this is the one on the right looking from the back, and this is the one on the left looking at the back. So the right one is the higher tone, and the left one is the lower tone. Okay, so we want this longer lever, the one that goes to the right, to be the one that drops first, and then the shorter level lever to be the one that drops second. Right now, remember, we've got them in backwards, so let's see what happens. <laughs> Oops, there we go. Oh, what am I, I see, yeah. Got them a little jammed up here. Okay. We've got gong coup. Uh, I've got my finger on that. Gong coup, gong coup, gong. <laughs> so it's Coo, gong, poo, coo, gong, coo, which is way off. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to swap this long one and this short lever uh, so that uh, the rhythm will be right. So you can see here's how the, the cuckoo comes out. The gong comes out like that. And the spring kind of hangs up. Uh, there. Okay, and then... Now I can get the other two levers out. The long one and the short one. That's the order they go in. Um, uh, let's take the long one and put that back in. Right there. And then the short one. And finally the gong with its spring. And I'm not putting the spring in yet, I'm just letting it kind of flop because all I care about is the rhythm right now. Okay, so now let's see what happens. My finger's in the way again. Uh, okay. Okay, can't really see the gong going because I haven't got the spring set there. No. I should probably set the spring. There we go. You can see it move just a touch. Gong, coo, coo, 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 gong, coo, coo. So that's the right rhythm. I'm happy with that rhythm, so we're in good shape. Now, what we need to do is pay attention. Notice the, the star wheel, it's called, that m trips those levers. On modern cuckoo movements, it's outside. I can show you one of those real quick. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> yeah, this, this is hardly modern, but at least it's newer than the other clock. You can see that star wheel that lifts those levers is on the front, and you can adjust it with a screw, which makes it really easy uh, to adjust the timing of that cuckoo. Because what we want to eventually wind up with is a clock that does the gong coo coo, you know, in the right order like we've we've done here, gong, gong coo coo, gong coo coo, gong coo coo. We want that to happen, but also we want it to stop after it's finished the cuckoo and not some other place in this sequence. So what we have to do here is we're going to pay attention to where the star wheel is when the cuckoo sequence stops. So. There's the gong, there's the first, oops, there's the first coup, and the second 
Haku, and that's where we want this wheel to stop. And you can see, if you look carefully, that one of those pins, one of those edges of the star wheel, right there, is right in that position. So that's, that's what we want when we finished adjusting the clock. We want it to stop with the, the star in that point. I realize there were a few things I didn't mention in getting up to that last bit. One is that you can see here that I've assembled only the strike side and only the gears of the clock, the movement. And the reason for that is so that I can tell the speed that it's going to run with the uh, weight on it. And also so I can pull the chain myself and have the movement run at a uniform speed so I can check the rhythm of that gong ku ku uh, sound. So now another thing I didn't mention is, well, so what if you don't like the rhythm of the gong ku ku? Uh, you can, although I recommend against it, is you can adjust that by adjusting these little tabs here. There's one on each of those three levers. And I recommend against it because they're, you don't want to bend them up too much. And they were probably bent a particular way to make the cuckoo sound a particular way to begin with. Unless some, you know, future, unless some later uh, clock repair person has bent them. Uh, so you can see this one is bent up just a little bit relative to the alignment of the gong here. So it's bent up just a little. So that means it'll, it'll fall just a little later in the whole sequence. But I think that might have been original. And then here, this is the uh, short lever. So it's the second one down. And you can see here that that little tab is still in line with the uh, lever. And I'd leave it there. <laughs> but again, if you find the second coup happening too late or too early, why, that would be how you can adjust that. And then finally, the longer lever here, uh, you can see that, again, that tab is in line with the lever, so it hasn't been bent out. And again, if you find it happening too soon or too late, this, this first coup happening too soon or too late, you can bend that tab backward or forward. But don't do it a whole lot or it'll break. And also, for this point, we don't care about bending up the, uh, the levers just yet. Uh, that'll come later. I've assembled the movement enough to get to the adjustment of the lock. <clears throat> now, a lock is the term for the stopping of a clock. So, right now, this movement is locked. It's finished striking. So let's, uh, oh yeah, let me show you how this all works. So this is a rack and snail uh, clock. So this is the rack, this part up here. And this is the snail. It's got the little snail shaped thing. And if I look underneath here, why well, we see the um, minute hand, this center post. And do you see these two lobes on the sides of the minute? Post, what happens is, when it gets close to the half hour or the hour, why this tab raises this lever right here enough to let the rack drop. And I'll show you that in a moment here. And then when it, when the, when it drops, it starts striking. But first, I'm going to put this back on. <clears throat> Okay, so when the when this uh, lift lever, it's called, when the lift lever raises, why this is going to move out of the way and the rack should drop. But right now it doesn't. And that's because uh, of a couple of things. But we'll fix that in a moment. So once the rack drops, what's supposed to happen is it goes around and around 
and around until it gets to the bottom. This lever drops in enough that this lever up here can this lever up here can be stop the uh, warning wheel pin, the warning pin. I don't think you can see that very well. Yeah, there you go. The warning pin runs up against that lever. Now I've, I've kind of I've deliberately assembled this with a problem, and that problem is that uh, there's a couple problems here. One is that when it when it locks the gathering pin, that, that pin that picks up the rack and moves it, hasn't released the rack yet, and so the rack isn't free to fall the next time around. So the next time around, when this lever comes up, the rack doesn't drop. Needs to, I need to fiddle with it a bit to do that. So the, that'll make the clock uh, not strike the right number of hours. And then the other thing that happens is, I don't know if I can, yeah, is the clock can go past the point where it's supposed to stop. So let me see if I can show that again. Eh, not quite. There we go. There. <clears throat> and all this is because these two wheels are out of, uh, align out of adjustment, out of alignment. So this wheel that I'm moving with my finger, that's the gathering, that's connected to the gathering pallet. And then this wheel that I'm moving with my finger, that's the warning wheel. And that has the warning pin which locks the whole thing. So what should happen is that when it locks, when the, when the movement locks, this pin right here, the gathering pin, the pin that's going to pick up the rack and move it, has just gone far enough to drop, to let go of the rack, but it hasn't gone far enough to lift this yet. So let's see what the problem is here. So here, the problem is when it locks, it's too early. This, the, the pallet hasn't moved enough. It needs to turn a little bit more because right now the pin hasn't really freely released the, the rack. But if on the other hand, I let it go too far the other direction, why this, this lever will start moving up and the locking uh, mechanism won't work because the, up here, the um, warning pin will go right past. So what I'm going to do is unscrew, I'm going to move the warning wheel relative to the gathering wheel. And so what I'm going to do is unscrew uh, this screw here and loosen the others so that I can get that gear loose. Okay, so that should be enough. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is pop this warning gear out of place and turn it without turning, um, yeah, without turning the gathering pallet gear. Okay, so let's go to where we want it. To, so let's, let's open this. Okay, so let me get this apart with my fingers here. Just enough to get that. Ah, there, it's out. So now we've unmeshed it from the, the gathering pallet wheel, the gathering wheel, and now I can move this wheel freely and decide where I want it to stop. And I want it to stop so it just has enough space for the rack to move back and forth which is really about there. And then with that in that place, with that, ooh, with that gear in that place, right about there, I want the warning wheel here to be up against the lock lever here. So what I've done is I've turned this wheel until the warning pin comes up. I don't think that's in focus. Uh, 
well, you'll have to trust me on it. <laughs> so the oops, and this has moved a little out of place from where I want it. So I need to make sure that's right there. Okay, now I can use this uh, pivot locator to move the pivot back in place. Let's see if I can do that. In the video, there it went. It locked in. And usually what happens is the fan also pops out here. Uh, can't really see well. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. And on this clock, a uh, kind of annoying little thing is that this spring here gets caught. So, there. Now the fan's popped out again. So I need to push it back. Uh, let's see, where are we? Okay. Nearly there. There. Okay. So everything's got back in place. And before I tighten everything down, I can check this again. I can test the lock. So let's go. So the first thing is, you notice the rack dropped all the way down where it was supposed to. And then as we go clicking through here, we lock really nicely. Let me drop it just a little bit here. And speed, yeah. So you can see here, the gathering pin is free of the rack, so that when this lever comes out, the rack drops and stops against the snail here. That's, how, that's what controls how many uh, chimes we have, how many strikes, rather. And so I think we've got our, uh, our lock worked out. But the next thing we need to do is get our clock to... Woo! It got away once. Hmm. That may be too far. Let's see what happens as it... Hmm. No, the lever hasn't risen yet, so that was, that's a good lock. Uh, something else must have made it just jump. Okay, I'm going to ignore that. So, we've got our warning wheel and our gathering pallet wheel in place. The next thing I'm going to worry about is the is the timing of the placement of the star wheel here so that the cuckoo stops at the end of a cuckoo instead of in the middle. I've put the um, bellows levers, the cuckoo levers here, and the gong lever back in so that we can make sure that the clock stops right at the end of the gong cuckoo sequence and not somewhere in the middle. So what I'm going to do here is drop the rack so that's as if the hour started. Uh, let me just hit the hour. And then I'm going to keep my fingers out of the way this time. Um, I'm going to push this forward and we have gong, coo, coo, gong, coo, coo, gong, coo, coo, gong, coo, coo, gong. So it stopped before it finished the cuckoo. So looking at the gears and all, what, we, what I see is that the star wheel is too far forward. It should have, or too far back, I guess you could say, the next tong on the next uh, bit of the star wheel is too far back. But what I need to do is move the star wheel forward till it just is about even with this, this gear here. Just forward a little bit. And, you know, sometimes this takes experimentation. So I'm going to um, undo, I'm going to remove all these uh, levers. So I can get to the wheel. <laughs> now I'm going to unscrew this corner nut. Give me room. And I'll loosen the other nuts. 
those are loose okay so now what I want to do now you can see more clearly where the wheel is versus where I want it to be uh, so I want it to be a little forward of where it is so let's separate the let's separate the plates a bit so I can get this wheel out and now I can turn it forward and now I can put this wheel back in ouch place it's a sharp little devil um, now I can check where it stops okay there's the lock let's see where it stopped uh, it stopped uh, not good enough yet I want to move it a little further forward so let me push these apart again pull that so it pops out and then move it and then put it back in place and let's check the lock again okay so it's in the locked position and let's see where it is uh, that's pretty good it's pretty much lined up with the edge of that wheel you can see there you can see that pretty well that the spoke of the star wheel is lined up with that, that other wheel that's good so I'm going to put in the uh, levers now and double check that that's what's going on so the two things I want are that first of all the, when the clock stops striking why it stops at the end of a cuckoo sequence and then another thing that just makes the clock run better is I want to make sure that the star wheel at the when the clock locks at the end of the strike I want to make sure that the um, <clears throat> the star wheel has not yet touched the gong lever here because if it's starting to press against that that puts a load on the strike train and the train really needs to get up to speed before it's ready to uh, move that gong lever. So let's try again. Let's just move down a couple here. There we go. Okay. Oops, gong cuckoo, gong cuckoo. And it stopped right before it started the next gong, but I think I see that it's lifting the uh, lever. Yeah, you can't see it very well, but it's lifting. It's lifting. You can see the gong lever move a bit. It's lifting the gong lever a little bit. So I want to move the um, the star wheel backward just a touch. Okay again so we see it's locked right now and I want to move it so it's a little this way just a little bit of the wheel there so again pull it out and I can move it and I'm just moving it a little bit at this point so let's put it back in okay we're locked and you see there's a little space now there between the two so let me put the um, levers back the long lever first mm -hmm. there then the short lever Finally, the gong lever here. And notice I'm not messing with the spring yet on that. I just want to be able to see it move. That's it. Okay. So, let's drop that and get ready to play a couple hours. And off we go. Gong ku, gong. Oh, I've got my finger on the lever again. Okay. Oh, and it locked. Okay. Okay. I'm going to keep my fingers off the levers. Okay. 
gong cuckoo, gong cuckoo, gong cuckoo, gong cuckoo. And it hasn't moved the gong lever, and it stopped before it started, before it played the gong. So those are both good. And as I see, as I look closely at the levers and all here, I'm going to... Uh, well, yeah, it hasn't... Like, there's the thing with it down. It hasn't... Uh, the star wheel is clear of the gong lever tab. So we're done. That's good. I can tighten it up. And the next um, adjustment is going to be the position of the snail on the front. I had to do one more adjustment of the position of the star wheel, because after I finished that last video, um, I found that the wheel was too far backward, and so what was happening is it would sometimes not drop the second lever. It was just shy of dropping that second lever. Most of the time it would work, but occasionally it wouldn't. So what would happen then is you'd the last cuckoo of the sequence would be gong ku sometimes. It would drive you crazy. So what I did is I moved the star wheel a little uh, clockwise, a little forward, so that it's just so that's definitely finished releasing the second coup but it hasn't yet touched the gong lever at all. And that's the perfect lock, the perfect stop for a cuckoo clock. The last adjustment I want to make is the position of the snail. So the deal here is that the snail, like I said, controls how many strikes the clock does when the hour comes. The lever comes out, the snail drops, and it drops just to the edge. I'm sorry, the rack drops, and it drops just to the edge of the snail here. So, to adjust that, the first thing I need to do is move the snail around to the 12 o'clock position. Now, actually, the very first thing I need to do is make sure that the um, minute hand is far away from... Uh, uh, raising the uh, the lift lever here, because if the lift lever is there, I can't adjust the the drop and everything, because the the drop lever won't go back into place. So I have to make sure to turn that until the the lever drops. Now I'm in a good position to adjust the snail. So get on there. So the 12 o'clock position is where the lever, the um, rack, drops all the way down to the lowest position on the snail here. So let's try that. Okay, it dropped all the way down, but I'm not really crazy about how it's right at the edge of the next one. So it might hit 11 instead of 12. But, but let me show you first that we've got 12 gongs here, 12 strikes. So one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and it locks. Okay, so if, if the snail were just a little bit more counterclockwise, well, what would happen is when the rack drops, see it hit eleven instead of twelve. Let's do that again. You can see it hit 11 instead of 12. So I want to move this clockwise, one tooth. It's meshing with the intermediate gear here. Drop it again. And it kind of hit it, but that wasn't very good. Yeah, so I'm going to move it again. One, Just one tooth. Okay, that's better. But I'm still not really crazy about where it's landing there, so I'm going to move it one more tooth. One more tooth over. And it's getting very close to the edge of the tab there, but there's still space, so it's not going to hang up. Although now that I look at it, I'm not crazy about that either. So let me, let me move it back 
one tooth to give it more a more clean shot at that. Yeah. Let's see. That's actually looking good. There's some clearance there in the snail. So that's 12. We saw that. So now let's move forward to 1 o'clock. Normally you do that by... Oops. Oh, <laughs> it actually raised it. So that's 12 o'clock. Oh, sorry. That's, that's where I really want to see where the rack drops. So that's actually wrong for 12 o'clock. I want to move here. So I should have said at the beginning there that that's, I want to set the clock to where the tab has just dropped the uh, lever, like that. And you can see here that our, we're a little, little off there. So let me, let me try 12 again. Okay, let's look at that. Um... That's looking pretty good, actually. Let me try one over here. Yeah, that's too far, because now it's one, you know, now it'll catch. See how it caught sort of halfway between 12 and 1? That's a bad thing. So let's go backward one. One tooth. Drop that again. It sits right in there. Good. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now as we, as time, well, first, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now time moves forward. The half hour happens, which doesn't drop the snail, interestingly. It just drops, it just raises this enough for the rack to catch that first tooth. So that was one o'clock. Now there's the half hour again. And here comes two o'clock. Oops. Oh, sorry, that's one o'clock. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on here? Okay, time moves forward. There's the half hour drop. No. I always have to reset the rack. There we go. Okay. Now we go forward. That's the half hour. There's one, one gong, one strike on the half hour. Now let's go to the hour. And this should be one, two, three, uh, three o'clock. Yeah. There's the drop. And one, two, three. So it's looking like that's the right position for the snail. So now I can put the um, washer uh, in place on here and the uh, clip that holds the washer there. Ah, uh, there we go. That'll keep the snail from coming out and shifting. I had, I had that happen on a clock once where I had forgotten to put this clip in and, or I'd put an inadequate clip in, and so the snail had popped out and shifted, and so all of a sudden the clock was uh, giving the wrong number of strikes. So there you have it. That's the end of our adjustment of this clock.